about to have a visitor. Oh, interesting type. Yeah, most unusual, I'd say. I don't see anyone. My dear Watson, the street is hardly deserted. I don't mean that. I see one or two people, of course, but nobody appears to be interested in this flat. Watson, for the past five minutes, that young man's been summoning up courage to call on us. Oh. He's vacillated between doubt and decision, fear and fortitude. <laughs> ah, at last, fear is conquered. Fortitude is the victor. <laughs> well, I suppose you've deduced the whole thing. Who he is, what he wants, where he comes from. As a matter of fact, I haven't the slightest idea. But with so unusual a client, I fully expect a most unusual case. If he comes here. Wait. Ah, the first step. Is this Mr. Holmes' flat? It is. Won't you come in? Yes, and uh, that is Dr. Watson. How'd you do? Anything the matter? No, it's just that... Yes? Well, I thought you'd be much stronger looking. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really quite strong, you know. I can tear dictionaries in half. Can you really? Yes, of course, and I'd, uh, I, I'd show you if I had a dictionary handy. Well, what I've come to see you about will take brains. Well, I think Mr. Holmes has an ample supply of those. Now, uh, wouldn't you like to sit down? Oh, thank you. Hello there, my boy. Cup of tea? No, thank you, sir. I'd like to get right down to business. Oh, good. Well, my name is, my name is Andrew Fenwick. I'm 11 years old, and I live at number 17 Dudley Court, up a Spearmint Street. Splendid. Now, what appears to be your difficulty? Mr. Holmes, my father's disappeared. Disappeared? Yes, sir. His name is Herbert Fenwick. He's a bookkeeper at Rondale Industries. He's tall and wears glasses. Will you find him for me? I'll do my best, Andrew, but first you'd better tell me the whole story, and anything else that may matter. Well, sir, Dad's always been the happiest and most wonderful person in the world. Each night he'd come home and joke and tell funny stories. And every Sunday we'd take bicycle trips or fly our kites or something like that. You might see he was a pal of mine instead of just a father. I understand. Go on. Well, sir, starting a few months ago, Dad began to act in a very peculiar manner. You mean he stopped being your pal? It was more than that, Mr. Holmes. Dad began to leave the house for days at a time. He wouldn't tell Mum and me where he was going or when he'd come back. Just acted mysterious and was as jumpy as a cat. When was the last time you saw your father? Over three weeks ago. That's why I'm so worried. Usually he'd be gone for a day or two. Mr. Holmes, I'll give odds he's in some sort of trouble. And I bet Jack Driscoll is behind it all. Jack Driscoll? Yes, sir. Just before Dad left, the last time, he told Mum and me what to say in case this Jack Driscoll came round the house looking for him. We were to say that Dad had gone to Scotland to visit his brother. And that's got me worried too. Why? Because Dad hasn't got a brother. Have you ever seen this Mr. Driscoll? No, sir, I haven't. I don't know a thing about him, but I don't like him. Why hasn't your mother been to the police about this? I suppose that's because Dad told her not to do a thing about it. Not that no matter what seemed to happen, she was just to wait and have faith. But it's over three weeks ago. I just couldn't wait any longer. Then your mother doesn't know you're here. Oh, no. If I told her, she'd try to tart me off for sure. Besides, she's been quite ill, and I wouldn't want to upset her. Your mother hasn't been well? No, sir. The doctor said she had pleurisy or something like that. She's been very sick. I, I really wouldn't want him to know I've come here. Your visit will be held in the strictest confidence. Thank you, sir. And you will take the case? I'll look into it immediately. I hope this will be enough to retain your services. 
Oh, well, no, that won't be necessary, Andrew. But I insist. It's two pounds, six shillings. It's all my own money, and I saved every bit of it. Now, I think you'd better hold on to it. Perhaps you can do me a good turn someday. No, sir. A business deal is a business deal. Pay on the line and no welching on debts, I always say. Oh, very well, Andrew. It's a deal. But two pounds, six shillings is far too much. I'll settle for a pound. Really? One pound enough? Quite enough, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything, Andrew. Goodbye, my boy. Bye, sir. Well, Watson, we'll find that boy his father if you have to search every gambling den in England. Gambling den? Yes, didn't you notice his clothing? Well, I suppose so. Nothing extraordinary there. On the contrary. The shoes were most expensive, but the coat was threadbare. The trousers came from the best haberdashery. And the cap was ancient, attesting to the father's streaks of good luck and bad luck. Yes, but that's not sufficient evidence to label Fenwick a gambler. Quite right, but there were other indications. Young Andrew's speech, if you may recall, was sprinkled with the peculiar jargon of the gambler. Such terms as touted off, I'll give you odds, and welching on a debt. The boy obviously learned from his father. Mm, I see. Further, I'd say the man's mysterious trips were to various sporting events held outside of London. Horse races, dog races, and so on. Yes, Holmes, but why should an apparently contented man like Fenwick suddenly turn to gambling? Well, my guess is that the mother's serious illness created a heavy drain on Mr. Fenwick's uh, slender financial resources. He probably hoped for the gambler's classic killing. Well, Holmes, you've certainly answered everything. I'm afraid not, Watson. Two questions yet remain unanswered. Where is Mr. Herbert Fenwick? And who is the shadowy Mr. Jack Driscoll? Where to, Holmes? To Inspector Lestrade's office. In this particular case, he may be just the chap to help us. Now, that's what a gambler would call a long shot. <laughs> Driscoll. Jack Driscoll. Oh, yes, I remember him. He was, um... He was in the coal business. Oh, no, 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 straight. I don't believe the Driscoll you're referring to has any bearing on this case. Hmm. Stockbroker? Mm, I don't think so. Parliament? No. Railways? No. Musician? What? If you'll excuse me, sir. Ah, what is it? What is it, Wilkins? Jack Driscoll, sir. Alias Jack Ellisey, alias Gerald Jackson, sir. Arrested 1891, suspicion of murder, released. Arrested 1892, burglary, convicted and served one year. Arrested 1894, suspicion of forgery, released. At present believed involved in illegal bookmaking practice. Whereabouts unknown, sir. Now, that unsavoury brew sounds much more like our cup of tea. Tell me, Lestrade, in which of the various sporting spheres is Mr. Driscoll most active? Uh, um. Rumour has it that Mr. Driscoll is concentrating his efforts on prize fight matches, sir. Well, uh, thank you very much for your assistance, Inspector. You too, Wilkins. Good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> well, if I know you, Holmes, I suppose now we'll be attending a prize fight. Quite right, Watson. This very evening, hulking Harry Thornton meets Powerhouse Percy O'Noonan at Londonderry Gardens. Uh -huh. Powerhouse happens to be a personal friend of mine. You know a fighter personally? My dear fellow, I once blackened his eye for him. <laughs> Because he thinks. That's the kind of fighter I like, a fighter with brines. Mm -hmm. A very good combination, Mr. Finnegan. The best. Sometimes you make a mistake. You see a fighter what? It's hard, and you think maybe you got a champion. Mm. But if he don't think, nothing. You understand? Oh, yes, yes, perfectly. Tell me, Mr. Finnegan, have you got... Excuse me. Oh. It's time Percy got started now. You can take him up now.
brains? Oh, no, Watson, just a comparative judgment, you know. Well, I'll have to say goodbye to you now, Mr. Holmes, but thanks for dropping in. Not at all. Your boy was highly recommended to me. Who told you about him? Herbert Finney. Who? Herbert Finnick. Herbert Finnick? You know him? Of course. I was just saying that... Excuse me, Mr. Holmes, I've got to be going now. Curious reaction? Hmm. Perhaps not so curious, Watson. The proper use of that name may open several tightly barred doors. Proper use? What do you mean, Holmes? Well, if I'm correct, you'll soon see for yourself. Just let's continue to drop the name. <laughs> Watch it. Remember to get his advice on next week's card. You know, it's a pity poor old Bert Fennick couldn't come with us this evening. Yes. Do you know what old Herbert Fennick told me this morning? No, what did Herbert Fennick tell you this morning? Did you hear that? You know, Watson, it's not every day you can meet a man who give you insight. Sounds like, like just like what Triscoll's like, uh, been looking Bert, for. I told you to make me it. You remember? I said, what are you waiting for? Oh, that we met a chap like Don't like taking him either. They might get roughed a bit later, then somebody says they saw him leave with us. Do you think the street would be any better? You know him? Mr. Holmes, the big one is. He knew Percy. Didn't catch the other bloke's name, but he looks like a fighter I used to know. Got the sack for using unfair tactics. I figured he was a bad one. Got a nasty look about him. Well, if he tries anything, don't expect any Marquis of Queensberry out of him. Use some of your own tactics. Right -o. Get to it now before the ups and leaves. Let them know we mean business right from the outset. Stand by, Watson. I think we shall have company in a moment. I beg your pardon? Ever Fennick a friend of yours? Yes, but I don't see why you come with us. Certainly not. Who are you? It will be much easier on you if you don't make a fuss. Where are we going? To see a gentleman who would like to talk to you about Mr. Fenwick. What I want to know from you is where you saw Fenwick last. Well, I believe it was at uh, Murgatroyd's saloon. Oh, lying. Here, I say, look. Fennick wouldn't go to Murgatroyd's. Maybe the Green Man or the Houndstooth of the Brass Goblet, but never Murgatroyd's. There wasn't too much money. Well, Mr. Driscoll, you've been to a lot of places today. Perhaps it was one of the others. How do you know my name? Well, well I... Uh, well, um, you were pointed out to us. It seems you're quite a well-known figure in certain circles. Yeah. Well, Mr. Driscoll, if we should see Mr. Fennick again, is there any message you'd like us to give him? He knows what I want, that Welsher. Oh, he's in debt to you, is he? Over a thousand pounds. I'm not winning any longer to collect. If I get my hands on Fennick, that'll be the last of him. And that goes for you too, if I ever find out you helped him in any way. Now, get out of here. Good evening, gentlemen. People just don't have any manners anymore. Hmm, and this is not the time to instruct them. Come, Watson. 
Well, I only hope we're going to a place where they appreciate proper behavior and the finer things of life. Sorry, Governor. Not at all, sir. Not at all. Oh, really, Holmes, we've been to the coach and horses, the green man, the king's head. We've interviewed dozens of disreputable characters. Must we go through all this process again? I'm afraid so, Watson. It's the only place that we can obtain some further information as to Fenwick's whereabouts. Yeah. Oh, Barman. Yes, sir? Two pints of mild and bitter, please. Oh, and uh, some information. Mild and bitter is cheap, sir. But not the information, eh? Oh, no, sir. Herbert Fenwick. Oh, then, poor chap. What do you mean? It was a long year, not a few weeks ago. We were talking confidential like. Told me he booked a passage to America. Uh, too bad he won't be able to use it now. Oh, why not? Let me say you haven't heard. No. Fenwick's dead. Suicide a few hours ago. But how? Where? He rented a room not far from here. Mm. And he went down to the Thames and threw himself in. Left a note saying he was in trouble, couldn't go on. Let's see, have they found his body? Oh, no, not yet. Only his hat floating in the water. Uh, poor chap, it wasn't a bad sort of a chap, you know, but... Uh, gambler had a run of bad luck. Come, Watson, we must hurry, or Fenwick's luck may turn from bad to worse. Bad to worse? He's dead. Well, there you are, Holmes. What more do you want? The body. Oh, we'll soon find that. There's no doubt about that. The river patrol's dragging the Thames already. I assure you, Inspector, Herbert Fenwick is still alive. Then why should he write a suicide note? Surely the question is, why should Fenwick write a suicide note in such explicit detail? Listen, this is a terrible thing to do, but I have made up my mind. It is the only way to end my difficulties. Today at 6 p.m., I'm going to the Thames. I will jump from the Hartford Bridge. Forgive me, but have faith. Signed, Herbert L. Fenwick. Now, nah, Holmes, I can't follow that line of reasoning. Then perhaps this may convince you. Take a look at that hat band with Fenwick's name on it. You'll notice that it's absolutely brand new. Whereas the hat, of course, is unmistakably old. You mean that, Holmes, that... Fenwick here had his name put into his band in the last two or three days. Exactly. Merely a ruse to make people believe that he committed suicide. Yes, but why should a man say he's dead if he isn't? Well, to avoid his muscular creditors, for one thing. If they believed the reports of his death, they'd have no choice but to uh, write him off as a total loss. Yes, but if he's still alive, somebody's bound to see him sooner or later. Not if he's made plans to go to America. All right, then. I'll have an alarm sent out to all the ships in port. I'm afraid, Lestrade, that'll be too late. Now, what do you mean? Because he has no money. He needs it badly, and he needs it quickly. And there's only one way in which he can cover both his needs. What way is that, Holmes? Robbery. What, do you think he'd take the chance? Of course he would. Fenwick's desperate. And in any case, there's very little chance when one considers that no one would suspect a dead man of committing the crime. Now, Holmes, what am I supposed to do? Warn everybody in London that a robbery is going to take place? Oh, I wouldn't go as far as that, Lestrade. I judge that Fenwick will strike at one of three places. The wagon and horses, the green man, or the king's head. I say, Holmes, how can you narrow it down to that? Because Fenwick can feel certain that everyone in those places has heard the news of his death. Therefore, no suspicion could be directed at him. I don't know why I let you talk me into these things. Then you'll assign men to cover the wagon and horses and the green man? Yes, yes. Good, but there isn't much time. You'll have to get on with it immediately. All right. You know, sometimes you're worse than the commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Holmes, what about the king's head? Ah, 
That will be our little project, Watson. But first, I want you to carry out a mission of the utmost importance. Now, listen to me closely. Mm -hmm. you have the boy. seen them come and go, big and small, happy and sad, and I attend to my business and keeps my hands clean. Ah, oh, well, that's a splendid philosophy. Yeah? It's getting near closing time. Oh, yes, sir. So it is. <laughs> Sure he does, but uh, then he has very little choice, has he? You, get over there. Go on, hurry up. You too. Go on. Oh, I'm sorry, Holmes. We had a bit of difficulty in... Oh. Oh, no. I've got him, Fennick. What? Brilliant job, Fennick. Absolutely brilliant. What's the game? Let me go. Oh, sit down, you villain. Here, give me the gun. Now, not a word out of you. But not a word. Dad, is it really you? Of course it is, Andrew. Your father has been working on a special assignment for the Secret Service. Haven't you? I... I... Oh, Andy, my Andy. Now, you don't need to say anything, Mr. Fennick. Your behavior is the model of a hero. Oh, take this man away. Now, you listen to me. Well, we'll have plenty of time for listening to you later. Well, who is he? What's he done? Who is he? Why, he's a spy working for a foreign government. Spy? Yes. Foreign government? And these, Lestrade, are the secret documents he was stealing from our Navy. Hey, that's my account book. A likely story, indeed. Here, let me see them. No, no, Lestrade, you certainly can't see them. They're even too secret for you. In a half minute, Governor, there's been a mistake here somewhere. I'm just, uh... Wilkins, do as the straight orders. Take this man away. Yes, Miss Strong. I'll be standing up behind the bar all day. Yeah, all right. You know, wait a minute. Let me say something. This is a crime. You see, Andrew, your father has been working on a most dangerous case during the secret investigations. Uh, quite naturally, he couldn't tell you anything about his activities. However, I think that he can now remove his disguise. Yes, yes, of course. Gosh, Dad, Mum and me were so worried. Your father is really to be congratulated, Andrew. You see, the Foreign Office chose him specially for this very important task because no one in the underworld would have suspected him of being connected with the law. Mr. Holmes, I don't quite know how to thank you. Well, Fenwick, now the job is done. Of course, you'll have to return to your old job and take up the strings of your old life again. But if I know you, you'll work hard, meet all your obligations, and carry on like the splendid citizen you are. That's just what I'm going to do. I'll never leave my family again. Then good night, Mr. Fenwick. And good luck. Come on, Andy. Let's go home. Oh, Andrew, I've just remembered something. Here's your pound bag. I just had a sudden thought. I think perhaps you'd better release that bartender. He must be getting rather upset by now. Holmes, either you've gone insane or I have. No, no more insane than usual. After all, everyone is entitled to make a mistake. Scotland Yard does sometimes, you know. I'm at least entitled to one. Good night, Inspector.